we're really looking now into how AI can help um, our customers evaluate the data much faster. Ken, welcome to Can. So this isn't your first road yet. You've been here a few times before. Yeah. So what is new with Inkscape this time around? Not my first rodeo. Been here before. Hot as hell. <laughs> um, well, a couple uh, new things happening at Inkscape. Um, obviously, we were acquired by Walmart in December, which we're really excited about. Um, uh, that continues to evolve, and we're excited to see like what happens there in the future. Um, but from Inkscape as a business, standalone business, um, we're excited about our renewing our partnerships with key partners like VideoAmp, Comscore, Nielsen, and iSpot to continue powering uh, currencies and measurement through third parties. And then as our own business, taking more control of our data to build new planning, activation, and measurement solutions that really use our data throughout that entire cycle to help agencies and advertisers meet their needs um, using our currency-grade data uh, to scale their campaigns um, and ensure that they're reaching who they want to reach. So let's step back a second and start with the basics. Tell us a bit about the, the Vizio footprint today in the US. How many sets are we talking about? What does deployment look like? Yeah. So Vizio has been a top smart TV manufacturer in the US for a long time. Uh, we're a US-based uh, company out in Irvine, uh, only sell TVs in the US. Um, and our scale has continued to grow throughout these years. I believe when we started in 2019, I maybe had like 9 million TVs or something like that. And we're well over 25 million um, at this point. Um, and that continues to grow now with the power of Walmart that we're really excited about. Um, but yeah, we're continuing to focus on the US market and continuing to grow our share um, as we continue to sell more TVs. And you were early innovators in the data space. You have played a critical role as a company licensing foundational data sets to measurement vendors. Tell us a bit about the origin of that strategy. Why did the company make that decision? Because it was, it was genuinely not unique at the time. It was. Um, it was really back, like 2016, 2017, Vizio bet on ACR technology being a differentiator from a consumer experience perspective. Um, they acquired Cognitive, Cognitive Networks, which was the company at the time, um, and we did interactive overlays on content. So we knew what uh, the TV was watching and you can engage further with it. That was the initial onset of it. Um, this is before like CTV advertising was like a big like thing. Um, then we realized that making linear TV more like digital was really important to get this, the scale of um, smart TV. Um, so that's when we really dove into how data can really change the way measurement is done in the space today. And that's where we evolved and started um, licensing data back in 2017. And I've continued to evolve since then, um, but data licensing is still the core and measurement using our data is still like the core of our business, not only within Inkscape and Visio, but also with our third party partners who leverage it. Now you mentioned um, some of your measurement partners like VideoAmp and iSpot and the like. G yeah. Give us a sense of how they use your data as a foundational input to their measurement solutions. What role does it play? Why is it so valuable? You know, each one brings their own special sauce, which I think is the beauty of our business. We provide the foundation, the, the great data that they build on top of. Um, obviously, we have Nielsen and Nielsen One from a currency perspective, uh, VideoAmp also from a currency and planning perspective and, and regular measurement. Um, we have iSpot, who has really great relationships with brands and helping them cross-channel measure their performance uh, on linear and streaming. Um, and then Comscore also from a currency measurement perspective. The beauty of ACR data is that not only is it linear, but Vizio's ACR data captures streaming as well. And it's really important as that continues to evolve and viewership continues to be more fragmented, which I feel like we've been saying for years, but ACR data really allows you to see how the consumer interacts with different ads and what content they watch on a linear platform, a set-top box, an antenna, um, or an app on the TV. And we really play that foundational role to help these companies create products to really uh, show the whole picture for an agency or a brand. 
Now you continue to take steps to enrich that data and to make it even more valuable to your partners. Can you give us a few examples of how you've been enriching the data over the last 12, 20 months? What's new with the data set? Um, obviously, we have a, an entire data business that we are dedicated to, its own product, engineering, um, and sales teams. Um, a couple key things that we've done um, over the air, um, which is actually a growing segment of the population, those folks who attach an antenna to their TV and want to under, like, get free broadcast in their market. Um, we cre created technology that allows us to see every single over-the-air transmission from our TVs um, that's integrated into our Watch Free Plus uh, user uh, interface. So we have a much more expansive local coverage, um, which really helps local advertisers and any of our companies who are working in um, local measurement. That's, that's really powerful. I mean, it sometimes feels to me that we're also streaming obsessed but yeah. we forget that traditional linear over-the-air broadcast is still a really important segment of the market, especially for local. It's really important, and if you read some trades out there, like some studies, like it's growing, right? People want, um, people are cutting the cord, but they also want free TV, and that's why the evolution of fast is obviously growing as well, but over-the-air antenna is also really important. So I think you've also been doing some really interesting work trying to help um, illustrate or, or analyze customer journeys, the way they move mm. across content. Tell us a bit about that work. Yeah, uh, we call it the viewer journey. Um, and it's really the centerpiece of everything we do now um, at Vizio. Because we have such a unique lens into how the consumer interacts with content across our platform and off the platform, but on the TV, so understanding how this one piece of content was watched by that consumer. Did they go to the owned and operated app of the publisher? Did they go through a fast channel? Did they watch it on linear? And what strategies can be deployed by each publisher to enable um, them to get the best uh, or the biggest audience for the shows that they want to distribute? And then how does it help them create distribution strategies of where it should go? Should it go into YouTube? Should it be on their own and operated app? Should they sell it to another publisher's uh, platform? So understanding how each consumer and creating cohorts of those consumers, how they get to content. I mean, a great example is um, the Super Bowl. It was aired on Tubi, right? Did that bring in new users to Tubi? Did they retain those users? Um, were they streaming only users that didn't have linear? Um, all those questions around distribution and understanding of the consumer behavior, not just in one app, but across their entire viewing um, patterns and history for the household is really something that we feel like is unique for us because we can see the streaming and the linear and everything in between. Um, and we're using that to really help publishers, advertisers, and agencies really understand where they should make investments and how they should distribute their content. I do think that's really powerful. Um, Sim has a working group looking at content measurement and analytics. Mm. And we spent a lot of time with the major studios, TV networks, cable programmers, talking to them about their wants and needs. And you exactly highlighted one of their big wants and needs. It's understanding how consumers move so they can make big and important decisions about windowing, distribution, which series do I put here, here, or here? Do I simulcast? Do I, all of these questions. And you're helping to answer them, which is really powerful. Yeah, and it's exciting, because yeah. it feels like we are in a very unique position to do that. Um, and even like live sports, like putting live right. sports, well, I mentioned the Super Bowl, but live sports only on streaming, like how does that impact subscriptions? And uh, what does that look like? Like there's so many things that could be done. So. Obviously, ACR data sets are hugely powerful, but there are some holes in the data sets. There are do not measure agreements. There are sometimes gaps in the reference libraries. Do you think there are things the industry could be doing collectively and collaboratively to try and address and strengthen ACR data even further? For sure. There's, we, there's no perfect data set out there in the world. We've been lucky enough to be invested in this space in 2017. We really feel like we have a robust um, system in place. Um, but I definitely think the industry can collaborate on, yeah, there are certain apps where they may not want ACR on, but they want measurement from a third party or something like that. As an industry, we should be able to come to the table and say, let's unlock this and put safeguards in place so people feel comfortable um, so we can get the entire view of some apps um, that now have ads. Because most applications have an ad supported tier at this point. And advertisers want to understand how their ads perform not only on one app, but across apps. Um, 
So we're definitely doing some work there to, with our business development team to unlock where we can run ACR, but definitely I think the industry coming together around that and finding a solution that's palatable for the publisher um, as well as the buy side, I think would be a very uh, key uh, advantage moving forward for ACR data, but also data coming from smart TVs in general. So finally, it can, everyone is talking about AI and retail media. You guys are doing some really interesting stuff, I think, in both those areas. Give us a sense of some of the things we expect to see from Vizio Inkscape over the next few years in those two buckets. Yeah, I mean, we've done machine learning since the beginning of our business just because of how much data is there. Um, we're, we're really looking now into how AI can help um, our customers evaluate the data much faster using plain text, trying to understand performance, um, how do we get them to go from zero to 100 tomorrow instead of taking six months to ingest millions and millions of rows of data um, and then trying to make sense of it? We, like, we want to get them there faster and allow them to connect other pieces of data too. They, most um, brands and uh, agencies have first party data. How do we connect that in there and get the story that they want and the answer that they need faster? And I think that's where AI is going to really play a crucial role in big data moving forward to really illustrate what everyone wants to see faster. And retail media, I'm guessing obviously with the new ownership, there's a huge wave of interesting stuff you can do in that space. I'm guessing with outcomes and attribution being a big part of the story. Yeah, I mean, we are very lucky um, to be now acquired by Walmart and we have entered in a beta phase with our agency partners to really illustrate the power of our scale on TV and Walmart's precision and scale on their retail media website and how those two play a full funnel um, or create a full funnel measurement solution for advertisers to see true impact. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, there's still a lot to come there, um, but we're excited so far with what we've seen. Ken, always a pleasure. We should yeah. do it more often. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir.